Hey, what's going on everybody? This is Sheldon with Gamers Unite, and today, as you can see, I'm on the Fantasy Kickstarter page. Um, I just had an interview with Josh Myers, who is the developer of Fantasy, along with Embodied Productions. He's the creator of that, and he's going to pretty much break down his game for you and give you guys the lowdown on what he's trying to produce for everybody. So hopefully you guys enjoy this. Um, as you can see, he has some gameplay trailers up. They will be linked down below, as well as his Kickstarter page and his Steam Greenlight page. So I'll let Josh talk a little bit about the game here, and he can kind of break some stuff down and explain to you what's really going hey, on. Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is Sheldon, and I'm here today with Josh Myers. He is the uh, producer of Fan the Sea. Um, how are you doing today, Josh? Hey, I'm doing well, Sheldon. How are you? I'm doing pretty good. Uh, thank you for the interview, by the way. And yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, no problem. Let's uh, let's just get things rolling right away here. So, where did you get the idea for fantasy? Where did that come from? Well, I got the idea for fantasy by asking myself, you know, what's a game I could actually make? You know, being a mm -hmm. screenwriter, fresh out of film school, I had absolutely zero coding experience, and I only had just gotten to 3D modeling and art. So as a screenwriter, I had story structure and character design down cold, and I had it all figured out, but the rest of what makes up a game was really, really intimidating. So mm -hmm. I looked at what other story-driven games have done, you know, like Firewatch, The Vanishing of Ethan Carter, Gone Home, and then like To the Moon, and yeah. I thought, hey, you know, I could do that. It's all story. I know story. So then the next step after that was figuring out a new and fresh mechanic to implement into the gameplay that would highlight that story and make my game unique, and what I got was the suspicion system. Okay, and the uh, suspicion system, I've read a little bit about the suspicion system, and, and that's what right. really makes fantasy unique. Yeah, yeah, definitely. The suspicion system is what sets fantasy apart, and it's like the core gameplay mechanic. The suspicion system is the mechanic that I came up with to manage the players in Isaac's lies. And how it works is Isaac has a suspicion meter for each NPC relationship that he has, right? In okay. addition to the town's suspicion of him as a whole. And now if the town suspects him as a whole, you lose the game and you have to start over from a checkpoint. So with the checkpoint system, Isaac can just kind of restart from any point in the game. It's not a total end game type thing. If you get caught or anything, you don't have to start over from the beginning. You can just pick up from a save file. Yeah, so you know, like every video game ever, you know, you have a you have a save file that you can mm -hmm. choose from the menu, and you the player can be able to save at any time that he wants. So, you know, if you know that you're gonna have a hard conversation with an NPC, you know, when you get into town, or you know that you messed up on a lie and you're not sure how you're gonna get out of it, yeah. you can save. And then go into the conversation that way because, you know, getting caught in your lie is going to be a fairly common experience for the player. It's not going to be mm -hmm. this like, oh, I, if, I, if I lose and I get caught, then I have to start all the way over. It's like, no, like, dude, this is so hard. You were trying to wear so yeah. many masks <laughs> with so many dialogue options. Like, you're going to trip up. And mm -hmm. actually, you know, giving the player that chance to save whenever they want, whenever they're stressed, whenever they're unsure will really help them keep interest in the game and maintain their immersion of it. So, I mean, the argument could be made that, well, I mean, somebody could just camp the save button in front of every single conversation. But I mean, you know what? Hey, if that's how you want to play the game, then you can play the game that way. And that yeah. might tamper with your immersion in that, you know, that you might, you know, might say, oh, this game is easy. It's like, well, yeah, bro, you saved all the time. Um, mm -hmm. But just giving the player that option um, really lets them navigate how hard they want the game to be and how much consequence they want their actions to have. Yeah, to each their own kind of thing where, you know, if that's how you want to play it, that's how you can play it. And if you want to play it this way, you can play it however you want to. It's your own storyline thing. That's what I love about single player games, too. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, back to the back to the suspicion system, uh, how that works is that every action Isaac performs, like physically or verbally, will like ultimately net him trust or suspicion. Meaning that the game is like absolutely teeming and full of dialogue options. Since it's essentially a lying simulator, we aim to mm -hmm. replicate reality and tow that really fine line between offering the player the option to lie in just about any way they want, but not giving them so many options that they get overwhelmed or feel like their answers are trivial. The main yeah. way that Isaac gets suspicion, though, is if he contradicts himself or gets caught in one of his own lies. And the main way this happens, I mean, you can shove your foot in your mouth like countless ways, you know, but I mean, mm -hmm. this mainly happens when two NPCs who don't normally talk to each other, who Isaac has led to entirely different lies to impress, interact and see inconsistencies with who they thought Isaac was. And then when that happens, yeah. the player will have the chance to wiggle out of it and try to maintain their cover. 
Okay. Um, so will the uh, characters in the game, are they going to interact randomly, or are there set encounters for the AI that will just happen as you play the game, like they're set in stone storyline encounters? Well, it's definitely not random, but it's not exactly static or set in stone either, like not all of them anyway. Fantasy is an interactive story game, right? Which means mm -hmm. there's an overarching plot that the player will discover that can't be changed, you know, like the games I mentioned earlier, Firewatch, Vanishing of Ethan Carter, Gone Home, etc. Yeah. But... The RPG element of fantasy is that how you interact and manage your relationships impact how often these type of events happen. So for example, you know, if you try to hook up the bartender with the school teacher, he might ask you to wingman for him. Yet, mm -hmm. depending on your interactions with the school teacher so far, that wingmanning is either going to go really smoothly or really not. So the only definitely scripted events are main story events, and like an example of that would be the carnival. The example mm -hmm. of, you know, taking the bartender and trying to hook him up with the school teacher would be more of a side quest, but not side quest in like the trivial way, you know, you'll get a bonus or you'll get some armor or like whatever. It's a side quest in the sense that it's not one of the core things that can't be changed, but it's an element of the game that you give the player the freedom to customize their experience. And you know, yeah. the outcome of that date is definitely going to give you insight on those characters and give you more leads on the overarching goal of Fan the Sea. Um, but yet, since it's not a core event, it lets you customize it based off your lives and your experiences so far. Okay, so like, if you're having some, some tough time with a bartender or something like that, you think he might not think that highly of you, you can go in and try to mend some bridges here type things. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay, that's awesome. Um, so next up is basically, why did you create this game? Why did you decide to make fantasy a thing? Well, I made fantasy because I love story, you know, and I'm all about evoking emotions from my audience. You know, going to film school, I thought that films and television was the way, you know, to impact people and to get them to feel stuff and, you know, yeah. to get your message out there. But, you know, the more I thought about it, you know, games are the future, man. And games are so much more immersive than TV and film. Like, I mean, the only real competition yeah. that video games have are books. So, thinking of that, you know, I just get really fired up when I think of people's cynicism and how people seem to look down on getting involved in something. Like, you know when you go to the movies, right? Mm -hmm. Or you're binging a show or an anime or playing a game and you get really, really into it and it's like super rad. But then there's yeah. always that guy or that one friend or like your mom or like somebody who's like, oh man, it's just a show or it's just a game. It's like, yeah. hey, forget that guy, man. Like, for my experiences, <laughs> I feel like being able to be invested in something is a gift that our super cynical culture looks down on. So my goal is to make stories so compelling and so engaging that even the cynics will admit that they got into it. And I really think that fantasy story and conversation about authenticity is one that a lot of people will relate to and be encouraged by. Yeah, and I think that that's an awesome goal to have. You know, I love getting really drawn in by the games I'm playing yeah. or the shows I'm watching. You know, it makes it like just like a real experience for you. Oh, it's totally. not like I'm just going to sit down and, and do this for 10 minutes because there's nothing else to do. It's like I want to sit down and get engaged with this because, you know, it's fun for me and I like being into it. Yeah, you know, so, I mean, like, yo, I don't, I don't got any hate, you know, on Rocket League and Overwatch. I mean, those are fun, they're fast-paced, but it's a totally different type of breed of video games. And with all the commercial success of Gone Home and Firewatch, Vanishing to be like all those interactive story games, I mean, the haters call them walking simulators, right? Because they want their Overwatch and their Rocket League. Yeah, fast-paced stuff. Exactly, but there's, there's a total audience and a total love for story that gamers are really starting to dial into. Yeah, that's something that can't be replaced. You can't replace a great storyline. That's one of those things that'll stick with you for life, you know. Yeah. Find a game that touches you there. Okay, so just to wrap things up here, I got one more question for you. All right. Um, right now on Kickstarter, you have a $10,000 goal. Why is that money necessary to finish off Fantasy? Well, you know, as scary as it sounds, like 10000 will finish us off, and it'll, it'll make the game happen, and we can play it, and it'll be rad. But we have so many more stretch goals and so many more dreams of what this game could be. But the 10000 mm -hmm. if, if we can just get the minimum, if we can just get funded, you know, if we can just get on the map, that's mainly going to go towards art. Like, almost all the budget is going to art because we got okay. the music. We got the mechanics and the story down cold, but we need more experienced team members to bring this game to life and let fantasy be the best that it can be. So tangibly, sure. this looks like hiring on a pixel artist for sprites and animations. It'll help us keep Meryl, our illustrator, who does these gorgeous semi-realism painted emotion sheets, and she can get all of the characters to be in that same art style and let us keep our tone. And 
you know, games are crazy expensive to make. Like, as the team and I crunched numbers, we were just blown away by how much quality costs. And right now, I mean, we've been working in RPG Maker just because of the lack of coding experience. And we just wish so desperately that we had the funds and the team members to move over to another engine or even just the art to mask this engine that has such a bad rep. And I mean, I understand Mm -hmm. why. There's been been some pretty shoddy games coming out of RPG Maker, but- Oh, absolutely, yeah. I mean, if we hit our stretch goals, which we're really hoping we will, we'll be able to have our own artistic vision and have our own hand-painted custom tile sets and for instead of forced to have to buy these commercially licensed RPG maker assets. So the 10,000 is going to let us get let's let us keep Merrill and it's we're going to be able to buy the RPG maker assets which I mean you can get over it like they look gorgeous but we're really trying to fight that stigma and it would just be so much better and we would love it if Fan the Sea could be its own thing instead of Fan the Sea that was made in RPG Maker, you know what I mean? Oh, absolutely. And I don't think the RPG Maker should have such a bad reputation. I mean, anything, any program that comes out like this where people can sit down real quick and just try to make up games, that there's going to be crap that comes out of it. Oh, That's yeah. just how this stuff works. Oh, there's yeah, not going to ever... It's not like you're using Unreal or Unity or anything like that. This is This is you drag and drop some stuff and and people can do that now obviously there is a coding side of it that can be used but you get some teenage kids that come on this stuff and they don't really know what they're doing they just want to make a Mm -hmm. game they think it's cool yeah and putting a character down on a map with a couple houses that's not that's not being a, a game producer that's not being a developer by any means and i think that the people that go in and do that they create the bad reputation for it and it and it cripples people that are actually out here trying to develop real games yeah. Um, yeah, I agree. Yeah, but anyway, thank you so much for this interview. I really appreciate it, and yeah. um, I enjoyed talking to you about the game. I think that it's going to be awesome, and I wish you guys the best of luck in your, in your endeavors here. Thanks so much, Sheldon.